John chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. When Jesus then saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. From that hour the disciple took her into his own household. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and viewing audiences, Today, before we get into the sermon, let me introduce an old story. Once upon a time, there were a green frog mother and son. This son was so disobedient to his mother that he always did the opposite of what his mother told him. If you are leading this kind of Christian life, I hope you will repent of it. If God says, go to the east, you go to the west, and if he says south, you go to the north. If he tells you not to do something, you do it. If he tells you to throw away something, you don't. When he tells you to keep something, you don't keep it. I'm sorry to say it, but anyway, if we told him to do something, he did not do it. If she told him not to do something, he did it. If she told him to go to the east, he went to the west. The mother green frog had such a hard time because of her son. Finally, she was in her deathbed and spoke her final will. She said, do not make my tomb on a hillside, but near the river. If you make a tomb near the river, not on the hillside, It'll be wiped away during the monsoon season. But since this son always did the opposite thing, she thought her son would do the opposite thing this time also, and that is why she told him to make her tomb near the river. But after the mother died, this son repented. He wanted to obey his mother's last will and buried her near the river, saying, I have disobeyed my mother for my whole life, and how can I wash my sins? Now, in every monsoon season, he worries about his mother's tomb and cries out loudly, for grave, for grave. Of course, this is just a story made by man, but there is a great lesson here. Men speak a lot of words during their lives, but everybody considers a person's last will very important. Even disobedient and prodigal children try to obey their parents' last will. Also, the parents want to leave words that can really benefit their children when they give their last will. But this is story about like 40 years or 50 years ago or hundreds of years ago. Today, even though the parents leave their last will, children do not usually want to follow it. They even change the will. If the parents mention what to do with the inheritance money, the children may change it or destroy the will with their lawyers. They don't want to follow the last will because their brothers or sisters receive more than they receive. So many families have quarrels over this matter. But our God and the Lord, Jesus, love us with a love that cannot be compared to the love of our parents. And the last thing spoken by Jesus with all his strength as he was hanging on the cross just before his death and passed to us are known as the last seven statements of the cross. This is the 17th session on the message of cross and we'll begin with the third of the last seven things spoken on the cross. I hope you will keep each of 
the Jesus' last words deep inside your heart through this message. I pray in the name of the Lord that by doing this, you will dwell in the love of Jesus who gave his life for us. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the third of the last seven statements of Jesus is found in John chapter 19 verses 26 to 27. It says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. That is, the mother of John, a disciple of Jesus. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. Here in Jesus' words, Woman, behold your son, the son refers, does not refer to Jesus, but to John, who was standing beside Mary. He was telling Mary to consider John as her own son. Then Jesus said to John, Behold, your mother. From that time, John took Mary to his house and served her like his own mother. What you and I have to remember here is that Jesus did not call Mary mother but woman. This is very important. Please keep it in mind. Catholics should listen to this message. I feel sorry about it. Verse 26 of today's scripture says, Jesus therefore saw his mother. Does not mean that Jesus called the Virgin Mary his mother. This was written by John from his viewpoint of the relationship between Mary and Jesus. We find no record of Jesus calling Mary his mother in the Bible. For example, in John chapter 2, when Jesus turned water into wine, he said, Woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour has not yet come. He called Mary woman. Now the Virgin Mary was requesting Jesus to make wine out of water. Then Jesus answered, Woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour has not yet come. He was calling her woman. My hour here refers to the time of taking the cross and shedding his precious blood. It is because the Virgin Mary can never become Jesus' mother. Jesus is the original substance of God the Father. Being one of God the Trinity, God the Creator cannot have a mother. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, God says, I am who I am. Nobody gave birth to or created God. God existed by himself from before eternity, throughout eternity and beyond eternity. Therefore, Jesus, who is God himself in origin, cannot call the Virgin Mary a creature mother. Isn't it strange to call her mother? He is one of God the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how can God have a mother? If he has mother, he must have father too. Then he must have grandparents too. Even genetically, the Virgin Mary could not be Jesus' mother. When a baby is conceived, the sperm of the father and the egg of the mother must combine. The life energy of the parents are contained in the sperm and egg. But in the case of Jesus, although Mary gave birth to Jesus, Jesus was not conceived using an egg of Mary's. Jesus only used Mary's body like a surrogate mother. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. For example, when a baby is grown up in an incubator, the incubator cannot become the baby's parent. In the same way, Mary cannot be the mother of Jesus, who is the Son of God. Dr. Huang of Seoul National University cloned the dog, which is very difficult to do it. But then, when the cloned dog is born, can it call Dr. Huang father? It can never be. God wants his children to serve and worship God the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit only. Therefore, Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 to 5 says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children, of the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. We should never make any image and worship it. We must only worship God. Next, when Jesus said to the Virgin Mary, Woman, behold your son, it was to comfort Mary. As Mary was watching her dear Jesus suffering so much, she had such great pain in her heart as if being stabbed by a knife. Jesus, in his compassion, remembered Mary and comforted her. Even to the last moments, he allowed for her to depend on John as her own son. Then, by saying to John, Behold your mother, Jesus asked John to serve Mary like his own mother. After Mary gave birth to Jesus as a virgin, she gave birth to many children with Joseph, her husband. But Jesus did not say to any of Mary's children, Look after your mother, but he requested it of John, saying, Behold your mother. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, For our sole citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are able to clearly realize a true sense of the place to which we belong. As said, we who are saved are citizens of the heavenly kingdom. Because we are citizens of heavenly kingdom, we should obviously follow the law of heaven, the law of God. You are citizens of Seoul, or you are Korean nationals. So you follow the law of Korea. You follow the law of Seoul city because you live in Seoul. But if you go to the United States, you have to follow their law. But because our citizenship is in heaven, our spirit must follow the law of heaven, the law of God. When we accept the Lord, our names are written in the book of life in heaven, much the same as registering the birth of a baby in a local government office. At the moment you receive the Holy Spirit, it is recorded that so-and-so accepted the Lord and received the Holy Spirit at a certain hour on a certain day and in a certain month and year. The Father of the citizens of heaven, whose names are recorded in the Book of Life, is God. The true brothers and sisters of the citizens of the heavenly kingdom are the children of God who believe in the Lord. Then even though our parents gave birth to us, why do we say God is our Father? It is because the origin of life comes from God. Our physical parents gave birth to our bodies, but originally even the seeds of life were given by God. If we go back through paternal ancestry, the Father for all of us is Adam. I don't understand those who stick to their family genealogy, who say I belong to a certain family and so on. We have many family names in Korea. If we keep on going up, there will be somebody who lived in the Joseon dynasty or Korea dynasty. Then is he your true father? That man also has his forefathers. He had father and grandparents. If we keep on going, then we are all descendants of Adam. We are all brothers and sisters. I don't know why people care so much about their family names and hometowns in this small country. We are born from the same parents with the same life energy. So since the opening of our church, I never cared about hometown and genealogy and so on because I know this spiritual meaning. The forefather for all of us is Adam. The life of Adam who is the origin of mankind, came from God. God himself made the body of Adam and breathed into him the breath of life. Therefore, the origin of our lives came from God. Also, even if we marry and give birth to children, 
We cannot conceive a baby if God does not allow it. Also, God has the sole control over giving the spirit and soul to the baby who is conceived. Even if they clone a man, it can only resemble the outer appearance. We cannot make a human being the Lord of all creatures. I heard people say they cannot clone a man when they were cloning a dog. No, we cannot clone a man, even if we suppose they may be able to do it after hundreds of years. They can only make the shape, but not the content. That cloned man will be no different from an animal that has no spirit. That is why we cannot clone a human being. A man must have spirit. If there is no spirit, he is not different from an animal. Today, the science has developed to the point that the human cloning is being debated. But no matter how much technology may develop, man will never be able to create the spirit or soul of a man. It will never be done. Even if we might clone the shape of man, his body, God does not give the spirit to him. Thus, a cloned man will be no different than an animal, and we cannot call him a true human being. Also, the parents cannot control the gender, characters, and appearances of their children. Only God alone can control a life. In our church, there are many married couples who weren't able to conceive, but were able to have a child by the power of God. For three, five, seven, and even ten years of married life, they were not able to have a baby. They used all kinds of methods but were still unsuccessful. But when they heard about God's power manifested through me and received prayer with faith, they came to have children by the power of God. Especially in the revival of 1993, God moved my heart to proclaim to the attendants the blessings of conceiving babies and pray for it so Scores of married couples conceived almost at the same time. So after about four or five years, those children who were born through that revival together joined our church-affiliated kindergarten. Let me give you one testimony of a married couple who was blessed with having a baby. Deacon Jesung Lee and his wife, Deaconess Hee Suk, did not have a baby for seven years of their marriage before they came to our church. Then they attended a revival meeting of our church and experienced the living God. The wife was healed of a boil like growth in the nose that she had for five years. Then the husband was healed of a chronic eudonal ulcer. They gained faith through these experiences and now they wanted to conceive a baby by the power of God. They came to me and received prayer. God answered their prayer and gave them a beautiful daughter in the seventh year of marriage and something happened to this daughter when she was 11 months old. While her mother was not watching her for a moment, she swallowed a corkboard pushpin that is two centimeters, just under an inch long. She began to cry so much since the sharp pin was going down her esophagus. The mother became aware of the situation and received my prayer for the sick recorded in the telephone automatic response service. After receiving the prayer, the baby stopped crying and began to play with smile on her face. When the baby emptied her bowel after some time, the push pin came out. God protected her completely while the pin was going through all her soft intestines. How would have happened since that infant swallowed that big pushpin? But since they received the prayer recorded in telephone ARS immediately, God let the pushpin face backward and follow the entrails and then come out through bowel movement. Viewing audiences, it is God who gives spirit to man. It is also God who controls life, death, fortune and misfortune. And this God is our Father. Hallelujah, the Almighty God of love, 
Lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells. Manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases and newly discovered diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive, rejoin broken bones, and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away, may the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work 
so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.